So in today's video, I'm gonna be going through the three most common faults and the codes that'll put your PX Ford Ranger into limp mode. So there's usually just three main items in these Ford Rangers that'll fail and cause a limp mode scenario. Starting with the most common one, which is the intercooler piping. So these intercooler pipes are known for splitting. Um, this here is probably the most common one that'll split. There's also one down here that'll split. And as well as the intercooler itself. So I've replaced mine with an aluminium intercooler simply because I've had two plastic ones split on me already. So I decided to go aluminium and haven't had a problem with it since. Another common issue with these ranges is the EGR valve. So this is part of an EGR valve just for demonstration purposes. And also I've got a turbo actuator here. So these are known for also failing on these ranges. And there are a few different codes associated with all these three components, which I'll be going into depth in this video. So to read the codes today, I'll be using this Top Don ArtiLink 400. This is a very affordable and capable scan tool. Um, I'll have a link in the description if you're interested in purchasing one. These are about $60. They'll read the codes on this Ford Ranger perfectly fine. Um, I know I've gone into detail about a video using Force Scan and the ELM327 module, but this is more of a simple code reader. You just simply plug it into the OBD2 port in your Ford Ranger, connect it up, it connects up straight away. It's even got a little light there to um, you know, help you plug it in if you can't find where it goes into. Um, but it's much more simple. You don't need a computer or anything like to set it up. For a basic code reader, this is all you need. If you want to go more into in-depth sort of diagnosis and programming and that, that's when your force scan and the ELM327 will come in handy. But for simple code reading, just to diagnose a problem, this is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to be doing next is just replicating an intercooler pipe or an intercooler fault itself. Um, so essentially, I'm just undoing this hose clamp here. And I'm going to be pulling this hose clamp off completely and just putting the pipe on there like that. So this will replicate a split in the intercooler pipe or the intercooler itself and it'll allow boost to leak out through there. So the codes that I'm gonna be expecting to see here is gonna be either a P0299 under boost code or a P00BD airflow too high code. So the first code that I talked about is pretty self-explanatory. It's gonna be sensing that not enough boost is actually entering the engine, so it'll throw an under boost code. Uh, the second code, the P00BD code, is gonna sense an airflow too high code. So essentially the airflow meter is gonna be sensing that there's air escaping somewhere before it gets to the engine and it'll throw that code. So just gonna take it for a quick drive, let it go into limp mode, and then we're gonna read the codes. So straight away after driving it for about a minute, I've got a traction control light that's come on and also a malfunction light that came on and now it's disappeared. So I'm gonna take the car back and read those codes. So just gonna connect the uh, ArtiLink 400 into the OBD2 port, which is located down here. So we've got our light there. Plug it straight in. Now it's firing up. So you just wanna have your ignition sitting on your accessories. And now we're going to read the codes. So you want to select the function in the top left hand corner and click OK. That's processing. Read codes. And straight away, there we have a P0299 code, as I expected. So what I'll do next is just erase that code. So just go back, erase codes, click OK, and ignition on. So there we go, it's all being cleared. So now with the intercooler pipe back on, it's time to move on to the next code. I just thought I'd mention, I do have a video on the P00BD code, which is an intercooler fault code, in my videos, in the um, video section. So I might throw a link in the description right now. So if you're interested in checking that one out, feel free to click on it. So next up, I'm gonna be discussing all the associated fault codes with the EGR valve. So this is the EGR valve here, well, a portion of it anyway. And essentially there's a couple of codes that are related to this. 
but the first one that I'll be talking about and emulating is the um, is the actual fault of this valve itself. So what I've gone ahead and done on my car is I've um, disconnected the EGR valve here. So essentially that circuit is now open or it'll replicate a failed EGR valve. What I'll do now is start the car up, let it run for a bit and then we'll read the fault code. So as you can see, I've had the car running for a bit. We've had a check engine light that's come on. Uh, nothing else so far. I'm gonna shut it down and read the fault code. So with our scanner tool plugged in, I'm gonna first turn on the ignition to accessories. Then we're gonna read our codes. And here we have a P0405 code which is an EGR sensor A circuit too low. So essentially that is a fault code for an EGR valve that has malfunctioned on you. Now, there are two other codes that are pretty common on these for the EGR valve, which I'll discuss next. So the two other EGR related codes that are pretty common on the Ford Rangers is the P0401 EGR code, which is a system flow insufficient code. So if the VEGR valve itself gets blocked up and that flow is insufficient inside of it, it'll throw a P0401 code. And another common one is a P042F code. So what happens there is the EGR itself gets stuck closed just, just due to build up and you know all the gunk and that that's going through it. So it'll get stuck closed and then it'll throw a P042F code. So now just gonna go back and clear that EGR code. And there we have, it has been cleared. Just gonna start the engine up, make sure our check engine light has disappeared. And it is gone. Just thought I'd also mention, I do have a EGR cooler slash EGR valve video on my channel, which I might throw a link in the description right now. Just goes more into depth and the location of it and how to remove it and that. So yeah, check out the link that's popping up on the screen right now. So last of all, I'm gonna be talking about these turbo boost actuators. And essentially what all this is, is just a form of electronic boost control for the turbo. As you can see, they just sit off the sides of the turbo and they are known to fail. So I've gone through two of these so far. Um, the only replacements that you can get are aftermarket replacements from Asia. So you can't actually buy genuine Garrett replacements. Yeah, you can only get what's available in the aftermarket. And you know, the quality varies between them all. So chances are, if you do own your Ranger for a long time, you are probably gonna replace one of these. Now, the fault codes to look out for with these are the following. So you get a P2598 boost control position stuck low. And essentially, all that is, is this position here is stuck low. So the teeth inside the cogs here, they wear out after a while. And then what happens is, these actuators get stuck low. So this one here is actually in the low position right now. So the second fault code that you'll get is a P2599 boost control position stuck high. So just the opposite of this, it'll be stuck up here and it'll be stuck in the high position. So yeah, those are the two most common fault codes that you will get with these actuators. Very easy to diagnose. Hook up your scan tool like I showed you before and the fault code will come straight up. I do have a full video on how to replace these actuators without actually removing the turbo itself on my channel. And I might throw a link in the description right now. So lucky last is gonna be your airflow sensor, which is this item here. And where they sit is just on the intake here. So quite easy to replace. What can happen with these, if you don't change your air filter frequently enough, they can get dirty and blocked up and it'll throw a P, P113 code. So what I'm gonna do to replicate that is just disconnect this uh, airflow sensor from this position here, start up the car, let it run. It'll put the car into limp mode and we'll read that code. So as you can see, I've got a check engine light and a traction control light that's come on. And right now I'm gonna turn the car off and read that code. Let's come back to the scan tool. Click OK, read codes. And here we have a P0113 code, air intake temperature circuit one, high bank one. So what I'll do next is just erase that code. Make sure ignition's turned on, which it is. And there we have, it has been now cleared.
So as you can see, all our lights have now disappeared. So that's a wrap up for this video. Hopefully what I've covered there will help you in some way and save you from having to go to the dealership and diagnose your car. Cause yeah, they're gonna charge you a fortune when you know you can fix a lot of these issues very quickly yourself. I uh, definitely would recommend investing in this Top Don Arty Link 400. We read all the scan codes that we needed to today, all the malfunctions that come up, it picked them up without any dramas whatsoever. All the stuff that we've covered today, I do have videos on how to fix it yourself, where to get the parts from and all that stuff. So check out the videos and yeah, if you like the video, give it a like. And I'll see you guys on the next one.